Hello friends, good afternoon and welcome to your set live lectures. Dear friends, today in computer sciences, we will be talking about 8051 microcontrollers. To discuss this topic, we have with us our subject expert, Ms. Veepsa Bhatia. Ms. Bhatia is assistant professor in department of electronics and communications in, the, in Indira Gandhi, Delhi Technical University for Women. Without further ado, I would like to welcome ma'am to our studios and request her to start the lecture. Welcome ma'am. Thank you. Hello friends, the topic of my lecture today is the 8051 microcontroller. Uh, the term microprocessor is something that we have already been familiar with, discussed about it and know of quite a few applications of microprocessors. Moving a step further from the microprocessors is the microcontroller. Microcontroller essentially incorporates all the features that are found in the microprocessors. It has a built-in ROM that is read-only memory. The built-in random access memory, input and output ports, the serial ports, the timers, the interrupts and the clock circuit. So microcontroller can be considered as an entire computer on a single chip. As against the microprocessor wherein the, all these uh, memory are and the input output ports and the serial port are all connected externally. As opposed to that, the microcontroller has all these features on one chip, making it a single one chip computer. So microcontrollers become, are becoming more prevalent as compared to microprocessor because they require least amount of additional circuitry for the entire device to operate. And they are usually dedicated for a particular application embedded within that application, the target application for which it is required. As an example, the microcontrollers are commonly used as uh, engine controllers in automobiles and as exposure and focus controllers in cameras. These are some of the common everyday examples that we can correlate to. So in order to serve these applications, they have a high concentration of on-chip facilities such as the serial ports, the parallel input-output ports, timers, counters, interrupt controllers, analog to digital converters, random access memory, read-only memory and all such features are incorporated on the chip itself. As, it is, as I mentioned that this is an application specific uh, uh, targeting a certain application, so based on that application the chip will be housing those many facilities. The input output ports that is the IO the memory and the on-chip peripherals of a microcontroller are selected depending upon the target application. So that means the chip can be customized based upon the target application and usually this happens when the production is a very high level, high cost production or it is being produced in bulk. Since microcontrollers are very powerful digital processors, the degree of control and programmability, they provide significantly enhance the effectiveness of the application. So uh, the speed improves, the memory capacity of the device improves, the processability improves. All this is um, uh, made possible by the use of the microcontroller, especially in pace of the applications which were earlier dependent upon the microprocessor. Now in the families of the microcontrollers, the 8051 microcontroller which belongs to the family MCS51 was introduced by Intel, Intel Corporation at the end of the 1970s. Uh, it is pertinent to mention here that the microprocessors 8085 and 8086 also belong to the Intel family and 8086 onwards all other microprocessors the 80286, 386, 486 and the Pentiums all are the Intel products only. Now the 8051 family with its many enhanced members enjoys the largest market share which is estimated to be about 40% of the various microcontrollers that are available in the market. Besides Intel there are companies like uh, Atmel, then there is Arm and then there is Motorola which are also coming up with their microcontrollers. However, the 8051 enjoys a sufficiently large market share and most of the applications employ this microcontroller for its obvious benefits. Now microcontroller in the abbreviation it is referred as MC may be called as a computer on a chip because it has basic features of microprocessor with internal in-house ROM, RAM, parallel and serial ports within a single chip. 
or we can say that it is a micro processor with memory and ports. So a microcontroller can be considered a microprocessor along with all the allied requirements such as the memory and the ports collectively they are called as the microcontroller. So, and this is widely used these days as common household examples are the washing machines, your microwave ovens, the VCD player, robotics or in the industry and very commonly in the elevators that we see in the buildings every day, they are all microcontroller based. Now microcontrollers are usually classified based upon their bits that they can process like an 8-bit microcontroller or a 16-bit microcontroller. Now what does this 8-bit or 16-bit mean? An 8-bit microcontroller means it can read, write and process 8-bit data. For example, the 8051 microcontroller which we will be discussing today is an 8-bit microcontroller. So basically 8-bit specifies the size of the data bus. 8-bit microcontroller means 8-bit data can travel on the data bus or we can read or write or process 8 bits of data at one time. Now before we move on to the depth of the microcontroller, it is very important to see the differentiation between microcontroller and a microprocessor. Now as can be seen in this diagram, the microprocessor system comprises of a general purpose CPU which is your general purpose microprocessor which can be your 85, 86 or the successors of that family. Then they are interfaced externally to a RAM chip, a ROM chip, the IO devices, a timer and a serial communication port. So all these are externally interfaced. As a result, what we get is a big motherboard of which microprocessor is only one part and all these other devices are connected to its periphery. Connecting these devices would require intermediate interfacing chips also for the connections to be made. So as a result, the microprocessor based system becomes usually very, very large, occupies a lot of chip area and they generate a lot of heat because of so many components working together. On a microcontroller on the other hand as we can see in the diagram is one block in which there is a CPU that means a heart of the system that is the microprocessor equivalent. There is ROM, there is RAM, there are IO ports, there is timer and there is a serial port all in one chip. So as a result what has happened is that the size of the microprocessor based systems has been considerably reduced by the introduction of this microcontroller based system and hence the reason for the popularity of the microcontroller over the, its predecessor that is the microprocessor. Summarizing the differences between the two we can say in microprocessor we have to interface additional circuitry for providing the functions of memory and ports. For example, we have to interface external RAM for data storage, ROM for program storage, programmable peripheral interface that is PPI chip 8255 for the input and output ports, 8253 chip for timers and USART for special uh, serial port communication. In the microcontroller, the RAM, the ROM, the IO ports, timer and the serial communication ports are all inbuilt. Because of this, it is also called as the system on chip. SOC is the common term that we use the, when entire system is fabricated on one single chip. It is called as system on chip or SOC, SOC. So in microcontroller, we can see that there is no need for any additional circuitry which is interfaced in the microprocessor because the memory and IO ports are all inbuilt into the microcontroller chip itself. Microcontroller gives the satisfactory performance for small applications but for larger applications the memory requirement is limited because only 64 kilobytes of memory is available for program storage. So for such larger applications we prefer microprocessor than microcontroller due to its higher processing speed. So as a result of the additional requirement beyond the scope of what is provided on the microcontroller there are two options. Either we interface just the way we do the interfacing in case of your microprocessor or the other option is we use the microprocessor based system only because that would anyways be requiring the um, interfacing and microprocessor generally for larger applications is considered to be more effective because it has higher processing speed as compared to the microcontroller. However, in the small segments of the application or the medium range applications the microcontroller still takes an edge. So it is being quite popularly used for those household domestic devices or smaller devices of the kind wherein the processing capability of a very larger value or the memory capacity, storage capacity of very large size is not usually required. 
so now what is the basically criteria for selecting a microcontroller as i told you already that the microcontroller has a uh, bit size which can be one criteria that you know if i want an 8 bit microcontroller for 8 bit processing or i want a 16 bit microcontroller for 16 bit data processing besides that there are certain more parameters based on which the selection of a microcontroller is carried out now meeting the computing needs of the task at hand efficiently and cost effectively is the most important reason why we are choosing a particular kind of a target application so those parameters are primarily the speed of operation the packing by packing what we understand is that what is the chip size that we are willing to accommodate now microcontroller or a microprocessor is usually a part of a much bigger system now if that bigger system allows for a bigger a uh, microprocessor based environment to be adapted in then a microprocessor can be chosen but if it has very limited capacity then microcontroller becomes a preferred choice then the power consumption as i mentioned the microprocessor based system requires a lot of additional chip circuitry so this makes the power dissipation also higher as compared to microcontroller wherein everything is housed on a single chip so whatever power is to be dissipated will be dissipated that by one that single chip which is the microcontroller so power dissipation is considerably reduced when we are opting for a microcontroller based system then amount of ram and rom on chip that is required if as i mentioned earlier 64 kilobytes of memory is sufficient for the target application then microcontroller becomes the obvious choice however if the application requires a much higher memory then it makes sense to go with the microprocessor based system number of io pins and the timers of on the chip again similar criteria number of io ports that are required as we will see as we move forward in our lecture that the microcontroller 8051 supports four io ports so if the requirement requires four or lesser ports the microcontroller 8051 can be chosen if the requirement is higher the external interfacing will be required then again it becomes a debatable issue whether to go in for a microprocessor based system or to interface these io ports next to the microcontroller environment and finally of course the cost the microcontroller cost is much lesser as compared to micro microprocessor system because the microcontroller again the cost is incurred on that single chip while for a microprocessor system the cost is incurred on the microprocessor chip and all the peripherals that are attached to it which includes the interfacing devices and the cards in between that are uh, used to interface the external memory and io devices then availability of software development tools such as the assembler compiler and debugger also plays a very important role which will decide whether the microcontroller or the microprocessor has to be employed for a particular type of application now a little bit about the interesting facts of 8051 covering its history which is not a very old history because it was recently introduced recent in terms of the fact that much later than the microprocessors were introduced so it was developed by intel in 1980 it is a cisc that is complex instruction set processor controller uh, uh, follows a harvard architecture it's a single chip microcontroller and it's the industry standard till now till now it is being popularly used even though we are 20 30 years ahead from the time when it was introduced still it finds a lot of popularity and is still an industry standard which is very widely used now most popular in the 1980s and the 1990s and today it supersedes is superseded by the enhanced devices with 8051 compatible processor cores the successor to 8051 is the 8052 however all the uh, programs written in the 8051 code are upward compatible that is they can be easily uh, compiled and assembled in the uh, uh, software supporting the higher versions of 8051 it is as i mentioned earlier that it is manufact being manufactured by many other uh, companies besides intel so there are more than 20 independent manufacturers which includes atmel infineon technologies maxim nxp Winbound, semi, uh, ST Microelectronics, Silicon Laboratories, Texas Instruments, and Cypress Semiconductors, to name a few popular ones. However, 8051 by Intel still remains the basic core, and it can be said that from 8051 Intel, these all uh, companies or the versions manufactured by these independent manufacturers have developed. 
Now coming to the basics of the microcontroller 8051 architecture. So basically as I mentioned it is an 8 bit microcontroller which means 8051 can read, write and process 8 bit of data at one point of time. And this is mostly used in microcontrollers uh, wherein the uh, robo uh, applications pertaining to the field of robotics, home appliances like our common MP3 players, the washing machines, the electric iron and various industries. Now this is the circuit, uh, the basic architecture of the 8051 microcontroller. As we can see there are a lot of blocks in this, this beginning with the CPU which is the central processing unit which can be equated to the microprocessor. There is an oscillator, a crystal oscillator which is producing, capable of producing a frequency of 4, 4 to 30 megahertz and normally it operates at 11.0592 megahertz. There is an interrupt control unit which is capable of uh, uh, handling externally generated interrupts which are normally classified as INT0 and INT1. Then there is on-chip ROM for writing the program code. There is a bus control unit which is uh, actually responsible for transferring the control of the buses between the memory and the CPU. Then there is on-chip RAM for data calculations, temporary data. The, as I mentioned, there are four input-output ports that are already inbuilt. So four IO devices can be connected at a time to these ports. Then there is a timer and a counter unit and then there is a serial port for serial and parallel data transmission and reception. Now again I would like to uh, emphasize the fact here that generally the microprocessors and the microcontrollers by default employ the parallel uh, communication. That means 8 bits are either received parallelly or transmitted parallelly. But certain applications may require uh, the tar where the target receiver or the target transmitter is capable of sending or receiving one bit at a time. So in those cases these parallel bits are converted and sent into a serial stream. So that requires an additional control which is provided by this serial port which is capable of serially transmitting the parallel data or parallelly receiving or serially receiving the data and converting it into parallel. So it can be considered to be acting as a parallel to serial converter or a serial to parallel converter based upon whether we are transmitting or receiving the 8 bit data. Now we will be discussing each of the blocks that we saw in this architecture one by one. Beginning with the 128 byte RAM for data storage. Now we know that 128 byte is a very very less amount of memory, less amount of RAM that is there but this is all that is provided as an inbuilt on chip RAM. If we require more than that then interfacing can be made with the external data memory which we can discuss later as we move on towards the interfacing side. So MC8051 has 128 byte random access memory for data storage. Now random access memory as we know is a non-volatile memory. During execution for storing the data RAM is used. RAM consists of register banks the stack for temporary data storage. It also consists of certain special function registers called as the SFRs which are used for some specific purposes like timer, input output ports etc. As we move forward in our presentation we will see that there are dedicated SFRs for each of these functions which are solely serving that particular block or that particular application for which they have been nominated. Normally a microcontroller has a 256 byte RAM in which 128 byte is available for the user which is that is the user space which is normally register banks and the stack. But the other 128 byte RAM, uh, RAM that is there consists of these special function registers. So the RAM that is available for the user is only 128. Remaining 128 even though it exists is already assigned some special function by the way of these SFRs. The ROM that is available on chip in the 8051 microcontroller is the 4 kilobyte of ROM. So it is available for program storage that means when we are writing the program or the program that is written by the manufacturer for certain set applications that is all stored in the ROM. This is used for permanent data storage or the data which is not to be changed during the processing like the program or algorithm specific to particular applications. This is a volatile memory. The data saved in the memory does not disappear. 
after power failure. We can interface up to 64 KB ROM memory externally if the application is large. As I mentioned earlier, this is a very limited capability. The 4 KB ROM is not sufficient for most of the applications because the programs that we are writing are usually much larger. So what happens is we require more memory. So again, program memory can be interfaced. So data memory can be interfaced to increase the capacity of RAM. The program mem memory can be interfaced to increase the memory capacity of the ROM. We can interface up to 64 kilobytes of ROM with it externally if the application is too large and these sizes are specified different by the different companies based upon the company of which the MC51 we are choosing that will specify what is the allowable limit of the external memory that can be interfaced. It is important again to differentiate here between the data memory and the program memory. The data memory is the RAM, the program memory is the ROM, program memory or the ROM is usually the permanent memory which does not get erased once the power is switched off whereas data memory is temporary in nature which get, gets erased once the power is switched off and it is very temporarily available while the program is being executed to store temporary data. Now the address range of the program counter, the address range of the program counter means which points in the uh, which point the program counter basically means a pointer which points to the next instruction which is to be executed. That means if I have written a program which is like 10 to 15 lines longer, then after uh, current execution of the instruction is taking place, which is the next instruction to be executed that is pointed out by the program counter. That means it is counting the next instruction in my program and it can be moved between these locations or we can save the program from this location to this address. Address range for a program counter is 0000H which is in hexadecimal to 0FFH FFFH which means total 4 kilobytes of locations are available. So the program can be written within these uh, locations unless I uh, interface an external memory. The address of the uh, program would be between 0000H to 0FFFH and that will be the limit of the program counter also. Now uh, differentiating a little between the RAM and the ROM so that the concept of uh, data memory and program memory is clear. Now RAM is used for data storage while ROM is used for program storage. Data of RAM can be changed during processing while data of ROM cannot be changed during processing as ROM is more of permanent in nature. We can take an example of a calculator. Now if you want to perform the addition of two numbers then we simply type the two numbers in the calculator. Now this is going to be saved in RAM. But the algorithm by which the addition is to be performed is saved in ROM. That means the data can be changed. I am initially adding 2 plus 3. Then the uh, data memory is going to be storing 2 and 3 and sum of the addition. Next time I add 5 plus 7. Then what happens? The data changes from 2 to 3 it becomes 5 and 7 but the basic algorithm of addition does not change. This, the reason behind this is that this algorithm is stored in the program memory that is the ROM and it, this memory is permanent in nature and it cannot be altered and cannot be deleted unless until done by the manufacturer itself. <coughs> so the data memory can be changed while the algorithm which is the program memory cannot be changed. Now moving on to timers and counters which is a very important block that is there in the 8051 microcontroller architecture. Now timer means which can give the delay of a particular time between some events. For example on or off of the light every 2 seconds. So I, I turn on the light and I am waiting to turn it off after 2 seconds then counting of these 2 seconds is usually done with the help of a timer. Nowadays we have this timer and the counter which is inbuilt in our mobile phones, the digital watches. So all this can be accomplished by a microcontroller. Now this delay can be provided through some assembly language program but in microcontroller two hardware pins are available for delay generation. If I am using a microprocessor, I will have to line a very short program but it has to be done through the assembly language programming. Now this hassle is reduced when using a microcontroller because microcontroller there are external pins and these pins can be used to generate this particular uh, delay which I am using for example 2 microseconds or a 2 seconds or 2 nanoseconds or even more. Now these hardware pins can also be used for counting some external events. 
that means how much times a number is say repeated in the given table is calculated by a counter it is going to count how many times an event is occurring now in mc8051 the microcontroller 8051 two timer pins are available t0 and t1 these are the names given to the timer pins and by these timers we can give the delay of a particular time if we use them in timer mode and we can use the same pins for counting external pulses at these pins if we use these pins in the counter mode the mode selection is carried on there is a mode selection bit which fixes whether this unit is going to operate as a timer or a counter when using as a timer it is used to introduce a time delay when using as a counter it is used to count the external pulses coming from the device being connected to its output pins now 16 bit timers are available in 8051 that means we can generate a delay between four zeros that is 0000h to fffh so that is the amount of delay that is possible to be generated in these timers and two special dedicated function registers are available as i mentioned earlier for each of the blocks in the architecture there are special function registers the sfrs that are dedicated for the timer and controller mode which we'll be discussing later there are two special function registers usually referred to as t mod and t con which are available as sfrs now uh, generally the structures of these uh, registers are as shown in the figure th0 and tl0 wherein th0 is storing the higher 8 bits and tl0 stores the lower 8 bits similarly for t1 pin t1 there are th1 and tl1 we will be discussing about this later as we move into the detail of the t mod and the t con registers thank you on with our discussion of the 8051 microcontroller architecture the next block that we are going to discuss is the serial port block now as i have mentioned already that generally the transmission that is carried out using microprocessors or the microcontroller is parallel in nature that is the 8 bits or the 16 bits whichever is the size of the device in consideration those bits are generally transmitted parallelly however if the target application requires one bit at a time then serial communication is generally used the 8051 microcontroller has a dedicated serial port block for the purpose there are two pins available with this block the txt pin which is for transmitting data and rxt pin which is for receiving data both these pins are capable of transmitting or receiving one bit at a time thus making them serial ports in nature now normally txt is used for transmitting serial data which is in a register which is a special function registers the sfr called as s buff s stands for serial and buff stands for buffer so buffering the serial data 
RXT is used for receiving the serial data and S control register is used for controlling the operation S con standing for serial control. So again as in the case of timers there were two special function registers T mod and T con. There are two special function registers dedicated to the serial ports which is your S con and S buff. Now about the IO ports as I mentioned that the um, 8051 microcontroller is capable of uh, supporting four IO devices at a time. So for this purpose there are four IO ports available normally nominated as P0, P1, P2 and P3. Each of this port is 8 bit wide and has a special function register which is dedicated to it. These special function registers by the name of P0, P1, P2, P3 all of these are bit addressable which means that each bit of these registers can be individually set or reset by using bit instructions. Here I would like to shed a little light on the concept of bit addressability and byte addressability. By byte addressable we mean that the data as an 8 bit whole will be addressed. There it is not possible to manipulate individual bits. Whereas bit uh, addressable instructions are the are uh, bit addressable means that there are instructions available to individually uh, process or individually alter or modify either of the bits of this complete 8 bit of data. So as the port is an 8 bit port and I want to change the data at uh, the, uh, uh, the basic nomenclature at 4th bit in the data then I can use the bit addressable instruction to make that manipulation. So bit addressability is a very highlighting feature of the microcontroller which is there in very limited proportions in the microprocessors. So the data at any port which is transmitting or receiving in these registers uh, will be available on that particular port. The port 0 can perform dual tasks that is it is also used as a lower order address bus. Now again here uh, reiterating the fact that has been so far discussed in the concept of microprocessor that the address multiplexing is there to increase the addressing capability of the microprocessor. That means for an 80 uh, five, uh, 8085 microprocessor for example which is an 8 bit microprocessor it has an 8 bit data bus. However, it has a 16 bit address bus which increases its memory capacity to 2 raised to power 16. And in that case the lower order address bus is multiplexed with the data bus. So the uh, data bus can be considered to be performing two functions. During the first machine cycle it carries the lower 8 bits of the address and during the higher subsequent machine cycles it carries the 8 bit data for processing. And for the higher bits the dedicated address lines are available from A8 to A15. Similar thing exists in case of your microcontroller. Here port 0 as can be used to uh, store the lower address bus that is A0 to A7 and it is multiplexed with 8 bit data bus. P0.0 to B0.7 that means P0.0 stands for the 0th bit of port 0 and P0.7 stands for the 7th bit that is the MSB of the port 0. So P0.0 to P0.7 is AD0 to AD7 respectively and the uh, of the address bus and data bus is demultiplexed by using an ALE signal and latch. Now ALE stands for address latch enable that means when this pin is high then the uh, these 8 bits of the port that is P0.0 to P0.7 will be containing the address. When ALE goes low then whatever is contained on these pins is assumed to be the data which is to be manipulated. Uh, port 2 can also be used as IO port as well as higher order address buses A8 to A15. So in all the 16-bit uh, address will be formed by P0 to P7 and uh, P2 which, is, will, which will be P20 to P27 making the entire 16-bit of address data uh, address uh, location there. Port 3 also has dual function it can work as IO as well as each pin of P3 has certain specific function assigned to it. For example P3.0 can be used for serial input for asynchronous communication or serial output for synchronous communication. P3.1 is used for serial data transmission. 
P3.2 as an external interrupt 0, INT0. P3.3 external interrupt 1 that is INT1. P3.4 is T0 that is clock input for counter 0. P3.5 is T1 that is clock input for counter 1. P3.6 WR signal for writing to external memory. P3.7 read which is signal which is used to read from the external memory. Now when the external memory is interfaced with the 8051 then P0 and P2 can't be worked as an IO ports. They work as address bus and data bus. Otherwise, they cannot be access, they can be accessed as simple regular IO ports. Now, besides that, there is a block for the oscillator. This is used for providing the clock to 8051, which decides the speed or the baud rate of the microcontroller. We use crystal oscillator which, whose frequency can be fixed between 4 megahertz to 30 megahertz and normally it is fixed at 11.0592 megahertz frequency for the 8051 microcontroller. Now coming to a very very important aspect which is which finds a lot of application in case of the microprocessors and microcontrollers is the use of the interrupts. Now while the microprocessors require external interrupts to be connected, the 8051 microcontroller and all the subsequent higher microcontrollers of course have the interrupt capability which is inbuilt on the chip. Now basically what are interrupts? Now interrupts are in defined as requests because they can be refreshed or masked if they are not used. That is when an interrupt is acknowledged. Now, what basically in a layman's language, what do we understand by an interrupt? Interrupt is nothing but an interruption to the normal processing. A normal processing is going on for a microprocessor or a microcontroller for which it is programmed. And in between, a situation arises which needs the attention of the microprocessor or the microcontroller. Then the attention has to be diverted and based upon the criticality of the interrupt, that means if it is an interrupt which cannot be masked, which has to be addressed, then the program which is currently being executed is halted in between or interrupted. The data to be, uh, which the current status of the microcontroller is stored onto the stack. The interrupt is serviced by using an interrupt service routine, which is predefined for handling such kind of an interruption. After that is done, the data or the status of the microcontroller is pulled back from the stack and program resumes from where it was interrupted. Now a special set of events or routines are followed to handle these interrupts. These special routines are known as the interrupt handler or the interrupt service routine commonly abbreviated as ISR. So for each known interrupt an ISR has already been defined. So as and when that interrupt arises the said ISR is invoked and it is handled uh, after which the program proceeds with the way it was going on before the interrupt had uh, in between originated. Now these are located again these are located in the special location in the memory which is already predefined. INT0 and INT1 are the pins which are there for the external interrupt arising out of the system. Now we come to the pin diagram of an 8051. Now 8051 is a 40 pin IC. Most of these pins are now familiar to us like as can be seen that pin 1 to pin 8 are dedicated to port 1. Then pin 9 is the RST that is the reset pin. Then pin 10 to pin 17 are dedicated to port 3. The crystal oscillator is connected between pin 18 and 19. Pin 20th is for ground. Pin 21 to 28 is your port 2. Pin 29 and pin 30 and 31 are for dedicated operations which we will just discuss. And pin 32 to pin 39 is for port 0, pin 40 for VCC. While ports we are already familiar with now, the other pins we will just have a glance through. Now VCC is the power supply which is generally 5 volt supply which is available for the microcontroller. It works on a supply of 5 volts. VSS is connected to ground that means the pin is a, a, a unipolar kind of a device with the battery polarity of 0 to 5 volts. The crystal oscillator inputs are dedicatedly provided in which an external crystal oscillator can be connected. Now ports we are already familiar with what ports are going to be connected to and RST is for resetting or restarting the 8051. ALE for address latch enable which I mentioned that if ALE is high then address uh, is on AD0 to AD7 pins and if it is low then data is there on AD0 to AD7 which again uh, to reiterate are the are the dual functions performed by the port 0. 
then PSEN is for program store enable for store uh, enabling the storage of a program this pin is made high. Now the detailed architecture of the uh, 8051 comprises of these uh, blocks that discussed earlier are further subdivided into the smaller blocks to give a clarity of what is there in each of these blocks. There is an ALU in the CPU, obviously the uh, arithmetic and logical unit for performing the arithmetic and logical operations. There are two registers A and B, there is a program counter, there is a data pointer, there is a program status word, there are special function registers in the RAM, there is ROM, then there are latches to which the ports are connected, port 0 to port 3. There is a system timing, system interrupt timers and data buffer memory control that is provided. Then there is uh, the uh, dotted line portion indicates the internal RAM structure basically which contains the register banks and uh, bit and byte addresses and special function registers. Now ALU, uh, if we already are familiar with the fact that this is used for arithmetic and logical calculations. A register is the accumulator. This is the register that is used for arithmetic operations and is also bit addressable and is an 8 bit long register. Register B is used only for two instructions that is multiplication and division. This is also a bit addressable and 8 bit register. Program counter, we have already discussed it briefly. PC, the program counter points to the address of the next instruction to be executed from ROM. It is a 16 bit register, means that 8051 can access program address from 0000H to FFFFH. So a total of 64 KB of code can be written. It's a 16 bit register, it means the initial value will be uh, all zeros and the final value will be all ones, 16 zeros to 16 ones. So initially PC has always the 0000, 0000 value stored in it and ORG instruction is used to initialize the PC. ORG 0000H would mean that PC is initialized by 0000H value. And PC is incremented automatically after each instruction as is obvious that if the current uh, instruction is getting executed, then it will increment and go on to the next instruction which is to be executed. That is the purpose of the program counter. Now ROM memory map in 8051. So 4 KB, 8 KB, 16 KB, 32 KB and 64 KB on, of on-chip RAM is available. Maximum ROM space is 64 KB because 16 bit address line is available in 8051. Starting address of this ROM is also 0000H because PC which points to ROM is also 16 bit wide. So these are two interrelated terms. Now coming on to the 8051 flag bits and the program status word register. It is very important to first understand what do we mean by the PSW register. Now program status word indicates the status of the program at a particular instant of time whenever we are asking for it. It is an 8 bit long uh, uh, register so it is referred to as a program status word indicating that 8 bits. So it is used to indicate the arithmetic condition of the accumulator. Flag register in 8051 is known as uh, program status word while in most of the microprocessor it is referred to as the flag register. So this special function register PSW is also bit addressable and is 8 bit wide means each bit can be set or re uh, set reset independently. Each of these bits are dedicated to a particular purpose. Uh, the uh, bit 0.0, .0 indicates that means the 0th bit the least significant bit of the program status word points to the parity. The first bit is left blank intentionally for the manufacturer, it's not defined as of now. Bit second bit stands for overflow. Third bit, stand, uh, third and fourth bit con combined together indicate the register bank to be chosen. We can see each of these in detail. So P stands for parity which is PSW 0.0. .0. If it is 1, it indicates odd number of 1s are there in the accumulator. If it is 0, it means even number of 1s are there in the accumulator. Now over for flag which is second bit is used to detect error in signed arithmetic operations. This is similar to carry flag but difference only is that the carry flag is used for unsigned operations while for signed operations overflow flag is used. Now RS1 and RS0 are used to select the register banks and as I mentioned earlier in the detailed diagram there are four register banks that are available. To choose which register bank we want to use, we will have to make a choice using the program status word. So 00, 0 would indicate register bank 0, 01 bank 1, 10 bank 2 and 11 bank 3. 
and initially by default bank 0 is selected and if we want to change the bank we have to give a software command by indicating the program status word with RS1 and RS2 set according to the bank which we want to choose. Now F0 is user definable bit, user can give its own definition. AC stands for auxiliary carry bit which is generated when carry is generated from bit D3 to D4, it is set to 1 and it is used mostly in the BCD arithmetic where we have 4 bit long numbers and any carry generating from the lower 4 bits propagating to the next higher bit sets the auxiliary carry flag. The CY is the carry flag which is affected after 8 bit addition or subtraction and it is used to detect errors in unsigned arithmetic operations. Now structure of RAM or 8051 register bank and stack. Now 128 byte of RAM is available on 8051. Address range of RAM is 00H to 7FH. In microcontroller 8051, 128 byte long visible or user accessible RAM is there which is can be seen in this particular figure and extra 128 byte RAM which is not user accessible is also uh, available. This is available to the manufacturer itself, user can make no changes which is from 80H to FFH and it has uh, these special function registers whose functions have been predefined and are available with the user manual of the uh, microcontroller and they cannot be altered and they are indicative of certain special conditions occurring inside the microcontroller. Now these four register banks, in each register bank there are 8 bit registers available from R0 to R7. So one register bank having 8 registers R0 to R7, so 4 such banks, so in all 32 registers are available. As I mentioned earlier, by default bank 0 is selected. For bank R1, the address that is there is 01H and moving for further from R2, R3, R4 and finally R7 has an address of 07H. For bank 1, R0 has an address 08H, R1 has an address 09H and so on. So they are increasing sequentially as we move from one register to another. For selecting banks as I mentioned earlier, R0, RS0 and RS1 of the program status word are used. Now coming to stack, as I mentioned when we are discussing about the interrupts, uh, the, whenever an interrupt is uh, interrupting the program in between asking for the microcontroller's attention or control. Then during that time, the current status of the system including the instructions, including the uh, program status word, everything is set into a stack. Now what is stack? Stack is a raw RAM which is from location 08H to 1FH as has been predefined in case of 8051. It can be used as stack, predefined locations, predefined stack. Now stack is used to store data temporarily and it is last in first out, the LIFO kind of a structure that is followed. A stack pointer is a special register which is an 8 bit register. It indicates the current RAM address available for stack or it points to the top of the stack. Like as we know that the stack is from 08H to 1FH. So currently stack is full till what level that address is provided by the stack pointer normally referred to as SP. Initially by default 07H is there in the stack pointer because that is the first location of the stack. So by default it points to 07H. As we as any uh, thing is uh, pushed onto the stack, the first location becomes 08H and as soon as the pushing starts, the uh, stack pointer also goes on incremented depending upon how many locations are getting occupied. And after each push instruction, the stack pointer is incremented by 1. While in microcontroller after push instruction uh, stack pointer is decremented. After each pop instruction the stack pointer is also decremented. Now pop is the alternate to push when we are pushing the instruction inside and after the program requires the instructions to be pulled out we use the pop instruction. Next coming to the DPTR that is the data pointer in 8051. This is again a 16 bit register and is divided into two parts DPH that is data pointer higher and data pointer low which is DPL. Now DPH is the higher order 8 bits and DPL for the lower order 8 bits of the uh, total 16 bit register. So DPTR, DPH and DPL are all special function registers predefined in the 8051 architecture. Now coming to the special function registers, RAM scratch pad 
the, uh, this is the extra 128 byte memory RAM which is used to store the special function register. This is referred to as scratch pad. The figure shows the special function bit addresses all access to the four IO ports of the CPU register, timer counter, UART, power control are performed through these registers between 80H to FFH. Uh, the names are the accumulator again which is a special function register, the register B used for multiplication and division, there is the program status word, all these are predefined, they cannot be altered. So that is why they are located in this 128 byte of RAM area, available for manipulation during the program but they cannot be changed. Besides that there is an interrupt priority register, there is a register for port 3, interrupt reg enable register, register for port 2, serial control, register for port 1, timer control and register for port 3 all have dedicated addresses so they can be addressed by using the address that has been assigned from them and are available in the user manual of the IC. Now byte addressable. Uh, SFRs with byte addresses, there is a stack pointer which is byte addressable that means it will be addressed as a byte on the whole. Its address is already predefined as 81H, the DPTR which is a data pointer and 2 byte long in which DPL is 82H and the higher byte which is DPH is 83H. Then TMOD which is timer mode control 89H. Again, there is THO and TLO which is timer 0 higher order bytes and timer 0 lower order bytes being a 16 bit register. They are there in 8CH and 8AH respectively. TH1 and TL1 are associated with timer 1 storing higher bytes and the lower bytes for timer 1 located at 80H and 86H. Then serial buff data buffer register which is 99H and power control which is PCON which is there at 87H. Now, as I have been mentioning that interrupts are very important aspect of the uh, microprocessor or a microcontroller system and it serves a lot of useful purposes. Now what is an interrupt going into a little depth we can say during a program execution if peripheral device needs service from the microcontroller the device will generate interrupt and gets the service from the microcontroller. When peripheral device activates the interrupt signal the processor branches to a program called as interrupt service routine. As I had mentioned earlier, this is a pre-written handler, the interrupt handler and whenever the peripheral device is in instigating the microcontroller for servicing the interrupt, it will be going to this interrupt service routine to see how to service this particular originating interrupt. After executing the, uh, the interrupt service routine, the processor returns to the main program. Now the sequence of steps that are followed by the processor while processing an interrupt is first it completes the execution of the current instruction which it is handling, then program status word is pushed to the stack, program counter contents are pushed to the stack, interrupt flag is reset. Now because interrupt request has already been accepted so pre interrupt flag is reset. Program counter is loaded with the interrupt service routine address that means it is told from where the instructions for interrupt service routine are to be fetched. And an interrupt service routine always ends with the RETI instruction that means return interrupt. The execution of RETI instruction results in the following. It causes the popping of the current stack top to the program counter and popping of the current stack top to the program status word. Now interrupts are of different different types, their classification that is carried out. They can be external and internal interrupts. External interrupts are those initiated by peripheral devices through the external pins of the microcontroller. Internal interrupts on the other hand are the ones which are activated by internal peripherals of the microcontroller for example timers or serial controller etc. So all of the on chip components when they are uh, instigating or when they are initiating an interrupt they are internal and whenever uh, accepting an interrupt from external devices outside the chip they are called as external interrupts. They can also be classified as maskable and non-maskable interrupts. The category of interrupts which, ca which cannot be disabled by the processor using any program are called as non-maskable uh, uh, which cannot be disabled are non-maskable and the ones which can be disabled are generally maskable interrupts. Usually the interrupts which are high priority interrupts such as the ones which are leading to fatal errors in the systems are non-maskable interrupts and are uh, required to be serviced and the microprocessor cannot or the microcontroller cannot mask them and hence the name as non-maskable interrupts. 
third type of classification and which is a very important classification is vectored and non-vectored interrupts. Now an easy example, a household example to understand this is that if we are sitting and the doorbell rings, we exactly know that we have to go to the door and address that particular bell. We, uh, on the other hand, if the cell phone rings or uh, the landline telephone rings, so we do not go to the door because we know that the sound is coming from that particular kind of device. So that means there is an associating address which we are going to go to for servicing of that particular request. This is the concept behind a vectored interrupt. That means the starting address of the interrupt service routine is called as the interrupt vector. In vectored interrupts, the starting address is predefined. In non-vectored interrupts, the starting address is provided by the peripheral as follows. First step, a microcontroller receives an interrupt request from the external device. Controller sends an acknowledgement which is INTA pin, interrupt acknowledge command after completing the execution of the current instruction and the peripheral device then sends the interrupt vector to the microcontroller. Whereas in case of the vectored interrupts, microcontroller already has the pre-existing information as to where the particular interrupt service routine in the memory is lying. Now the interrupt structure of 8051 comprises of 5 interrupts. They are maskable and vectored interrupts that means they can be ignored by the microcontroller if it has a high priority task at hand and they are vectored that is their predefined address of the interrupt service uh, handling routine is already provided. Out of these five, two are external and three are internal interrupts. They are named as external interrupt zero and timer interrupt zero which are uh, 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 which is the second interrupt, external interrupt one timer interrupt 1 and serial interrupt out of which external 0 and external 1 are external interrupts as the name suggests the remaining are the inter internal interrupts and their vector addresses where they are located their service handlers are equated are also provided out of this external interrupt 0 is the highest priority interrupt whereas the serial interrupt is the lowest priority interrupt. Now two dedicated registers special function registers are there and out of which one is interrupt uh, enable register and the other is the interrupt priority registers. These can be manipulated and handled for the handling of the interrupts. This finishes the interrupt portion and finishes the lecture for us. Uh, dear friends, on that note, we would like to thank uh, Ms. Vipsa Bhatia for this very enriching lecture and we hope that, dear friends, that with today's lecture you were able to understand the process of microcontrollers. On that note, thank you dear friends for watching our show. Stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you.